Oh, so nearby Brad. You thirsty? Love it. There we go. Let's crack one of these open for you. What? Yeah. How you can open the other one now? I don't know. Give me a sec. Uh, I've got a charging batteries. There we go. Let's talk about Swamp Thing. Oh, so. What are you doing in my swamp? Swamp Thing is a DC character who basically has the same backstory as Shrek. You know, he's green, likes onions, and wants people to stay out of his swamp. And hence the name Swamp Thing. I live in a swamp. I put up saint. I'm a terrifying ogre. Unimaginably powerful, thanks in part to his connection to something simply known as the green, Swamp Thing can control any and all plant life on Earth, which allows him to, amongst other things, teleport via cigarette. So, do you know about Swamp Thing or the green or anything to do with this? This is some comic bullshit we're about to talk about now. I, all I know about Swamp Thing is the name Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. I, I mean, it, it says something that when you first said, shall we do an article about Swamp Thing? I said, wasn't he going to be in the Dark Universe? And that's Creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a pretty cool name, it's Swamp Thing. I think there was like that TV show. What, called Swamp Thing? Yeah, there was a, there was a, t a short-lived Swamp Thing TV show. DC's kind of in the position that Marvel was, like, in the 80s where they'll just sell anyone the rights to one of their characters, not realising that like, it's probably a bad idea to not have complete control of your own comic property. Like, they, like there's a Swamp Thing TV show. <laughs> there was like a Birds of Prey TV show that never went anywhere that. These three are the protectors of New Gotham, the Birds of Prey. My name is Alfred Pennyworth, and this is their story. Fun fact, starred Mark Hamill as the Joker, but he only did the voice and they got another actor to do the face and they just blurred it out and put Mark Hamill's voice over him. Knock, knock. Who's there? Batgirl. Past tense. <laughs> the most bizarre idea, and I'm really glad it never went anywhere, is they made like a TV show about Commissioner Gordon without putting Batman in it. Isn't that just Gotham? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still cannot believe they made that show. And I remember reading a bunch of interviews, um, like, you know, before it got released, where the guy said, look, you know, Gotham's an interesting city. Batman is not the most interesting thing in Gotham. You can tell stories about the people of Gotham without invoking Batman. The first episode they invoke Batman. My name is Bruce Wayne. There was nothing you could have done to stop what happened. But there is something you can do now. You can be strong. Be strong. <laughs> the literal first episode, and like, when they cock tease Batman for like all four seasons. I like how you say invoke Batman, mm -hmm. like he's some kind of demon. Well, yes, it's like, you know, it's the same thing when they make Batman media. They always mm -hmm. invoke the Joker. Like, because I forget which game it is, but there's a. Um, a Batman game where like the Joker's dead. Like the opening cutscene is the Joker's dead body, and they're like, the Joker's definitely dead. He appears like 10 minutes in. One thing we really wanted to respect was the events of Arkham City. So we didn't want to kind of kill Joker at the end and then say, oh, that was a cheap shot, you know, but like, let her he's not really dead, bring him back. He is dead, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miss me. Or that like Suicide Squad game, where it's like, you know, it's about the Suicide Squad Batman. <laughs> Fox, and you've got all the characters DC. Well, speaking of which, Swamp Thing. So you don't know anything about Swamp Thing or the green? I mean, by the sounds of it, he's a thing that lives in a swamp that mm -hmm. can teleport through plants. Yeah, so Swamp Thing, um, his powers come from his connection to the green, which is the term used to describe like this nebulous universal constant in the no. DC. DC loves to do that. Like yeah. the, the speed force is another one. Yeah. So they have the green, like the blue, the purple, all this oh. stuff. And each one has a connection to like, you know, a fundamental force of the universe. And the green is connected to plant life. Not will. Not will. Because no. they've already done that with one of their heroes. No, that's the emotional spectrum. Oh, get for it right. God's sake. Should we talk about that? That's real fun as well. The emotional spectrum. Yeah, where it's like, you know, green is the power of willpower, but like yellow is the colour of fear. <laughs> but then you have like, oh man. Like, yeah, the emotional spectrum in DC is so funny because like they're all supposed to be just as powerful as each other, but then the Green Lanterns always win. <laughs> it's like they have like purple, which is love, 
And they like, you know, and I think it took them a good like ten years before they had the balls to actually put characters in who were gay. Even though, like, you know, the the universal force of love should be like, you know, just it, everyone. Yeah, everyone can love. Everyone should be able to love who they want. Yeah. And they never like, and they always just go back to the Green Lanterns, even though all the other like Lantern cores are way more interesting. I just never understood how they can be like, oh, the the um the weakness of the Green Lanterns is the color yellow. How? Because Does that mean if you just wear yellow, then you win the fight? In the early comics, yes. Well, they've changed that then. Yeah, it was also like they were scared of wood. Wood wouldn't work. They scared of wood? They couldn't manipulate wood with their constructs. Wait, so that means that the green, who is all plant-based, but then there's also green lanterns. Yeah. So would the green be able to beat the green lanterns? Yeah. But also shut up. Which is why I think as well, like, we always talk about like, DC and we make fun of it a little bit. This is why. Because their universe just doesn't feel as consistent as the Marvel Universe, which is no better showcase for the fact they keep fucking rebooting it. I mean, I am going to play devil's advocate here and say that I imagine there's some of this bullshit in the Marvel Universe as well. There is, but they try to keep it a bit more consistent. There's a couple of things like, you know, the sliding time scale. They have like six rocks that can destroy the universe. Yeah. And the... But DC, to my knowledge at least, seems to play a lot more fast and loose with just introducing concepts that are like unimaginably powerful and control everything, and yeah. the green is one of those. And Swamp Thing has a direct connection to the green and complete dominion over it. So as a result, um, theoretically, um, can control all plant life in the universe, and their power is effectively infinite so long as plant life continues to exist. Does it have to be carbon-based plant life? Nope. So, so what defines a plant? Just can you control mushrooms? Yeah. But they're not... They're shut bum- up! <laughs> Bruh, shut up! <laughs> Every time we do one of these yeah. on comics, I'm always trying to pick it apart because I, I want things to make sense. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it just doesn't. And that's the thing is like, you know, what is a plant? And like, you know, there probably is a technical definition someone's going to quote to us, but... What about poison ivy? Yeah, you can control that. As in, the person. Oh yeah, poison ivy really likes one thing. Your crimes will not stand. Kisses only, please. I also have fists. Oh well, yeah, in a lot of comics, they actually do get on because their goals, like you know, do like, have a lot of crossover. Of Swamp Thing wants to protect the green, aka all plant life, and Poison Ivy wants to kill all the men because the men are the ones who pollute the plant life. So they do get on. Didn't we stop being friends because I wanted to destroy humanity? Sure, I- that wasn't the best, but it was mostly that you were a shitty friend. I think in a couple of comics they like either get it on or like collaborate on stuff before like Poison Ivy starts getting like big lesbian on with it's, Harley, uh, Harley Quinn. Yeah. I would listen to you for hours complaining about humans being the worst and how you didn't understand the appeal of those bougie Lacoste polos. I don't, I'm, I'm done. Like <laughs> fucking comics. The green. So you like the green? Do you know the, the best bit about it as well is like the green is such a nebulous concept with like alien shit. Well, just for my own amusement, I just like the fact that Swamp Thing can control cactuses. That's terrifying. Like, imagine you're, like, you're just sat in your house and just a cactus starts fucking swinging on you. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, we got a Gagnia! Yeah. Ah. And what do you do? <laughs> like, that's the thing. Imagine like, you, know, you throw some rubbish out your window and you're like, oh, fuck it, I'm going to litter. Then a cactus comes for you. You guess there's some big cactuses out there. Mm. Like... You could turn them into like cactuses. people, they could walk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Complete dominion and control over all um, plant life. Or like, you know, all that poison shit that kills people. So does the plant life have to be alive? Yes. Okay. Or at least has to be organic or like, you know, still has some physical form left. Because like, you know, f- food in your kitchen might be plant life that's not alive anymore. Like oh, a, yeah, swamp a lettuce. Thing. Yeah, Swamp Thing's about that. If you've got a lettuce in your kitchen, Swamp Thing could have that lettuce and beat it to death with it. <laughs> You're making a sandwich and it just comes to life like Fantasia. Yeah. That can happen. Like, what about, like, I, I just, I want to ask more questions. Yeah. It, I don't, like, I know, I know the actual answer is whatever the comic book writer mm-hmm. wants it to do at the time. But, like, looking around this room now, oh, yeah. like, that's made of wood. wood Could he control what? the wood? Yeah, the wood exists. Like, but, so... They just beat you to death with the floorboards. Yeah, and keep in mind as well that Swamp Thing's physical form is just reconstituted like plant matter. I mean, and that's what we all are, really. Yeah, and you could destroy <laughs> that, but you'd be able to make a new body. 
because he can just telekinetically like you know jump his consciousness into any nearby plant matter and so when i say nearby that's a relative term because as long as it exists somewhere in the universe swamp thing can jump his consciousness into it so he can travel across the universe instantaneously by just jumping into an alien cactus fuck you and before you ask the answer is shut up <laughs> oh. Carl can see the cogs turn and be like, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't I make want, sense. I just want to ask more questions. And I know there's going to be people like, we want to hear about the cigarette, Brad. Stop Comic asking books. questions. You claim to serve the green. The plants are my babies. So why treat them as slaves? So Swamp Thing, is he a hero? He's not really anything. Because his only concern is protecting the green, so he doesn't really interact with many of DC's heroes or villains. I also want to point out that all plants are green. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up! But especially not green like, you know, universe, like, you know, in alien um, uh, biomes or so on, but shut up, it's called the green. Whatever. But no, he uh, generally doesn't interact with much of, like, you know, the mainstream DC continuity unless they happen to, like, you know, come into his swamp, which he doesn't like, or threaten plant life. Which seems a bit like a weird thing that he gives such a huge shit about Earth, given that, like, you know, all plant life in the galaxy is supposedly, the universe, should say, what? is supposedly under his control and protection. What constitutes threatening plant life? Like, what if you cut down a tree? Well, fuck you, the green's gonna get you. Perhaps his actions are a kind of justice for who destroys more of the green than your kind. What if you pull a leaf off a plant? Blast. The green. If he sees it, he'll get you. It's the same thing. Well, like... he said he sees it. He sees everything in the universe at once. Yeah, all the plants. And he like... can just teleport to you immediately. Well, that's the thing as well. I'm like... never pulling a carrot out of the ground again. Yeah, that's the thing. Is all plants are snitches. <laughs> it's DC canon that all plants inherently just know how to snitch. Faust lives in an observatory which is invisible. It's a place where dark magic would infect the earth below it. I will take you there, so you are no longer here. This is too powerful! It is too powerful, yeah. Rain the characters in, it doesn't make any sense. Well, that's why he doesn't really interact with many of DC's mainstream continuity, because if he did, he'd win. Because you can't beat him, because to beat him would mean killing all plant life on Earth. But even then, he could probably just, like, you know, make a planet overgrow and just fly that into the Earth anyway. But just know that this thing here will be the death of your precious green. So he's meant to be like a manifestation or a consciousness that exists in plants or biological matter of that nature. Mm -hmm. And regardless of how much of it you destroy, unless you get rid of every cell of it, yeah. he can move his consciousness into that. Basically, yeah, it's like basically cell from Dragon Ball. Like you need to destroy like every atom of um, like whatever body is currently like, you know inside. And even then, if there's any plant matter nearby, and plant matter is a very broad term, as we're about to discuss, he'll just jump into that and then, like, you know, just make it turn into a giant body. And he can grow, like, three, four hundred feet tall if he wants. He can be, like, you know, as small as a, um, a grain of sand. Is he a human? Like, is he was he... a guy, yeah. Right. Initially, he was a guy. And then so he's he became... Dr. Manhattan for plants? Yeah. So he was a guy, and then he became Swamp Thing. But I'm guessing in the comic law, he's always been Swamp Thing. I don't From know. the moment life existed. Well, there's always been a Swamp Thing, yeah. There's always, like, you know, an avatar for the green. And that's the thing, the fact it's called the green so is so lame. But no, yeah. As long as plant life exists, um, he will be there, but he doesn't really interact. Like, Batman doesn't really like, interact with Swamp Thing on the reg. Which well, he probably should do. Unless a TV show and then he turn up. Yeah, which <laughs> he probably should, given how much he pollutes the environment. Like, I bet, like, Wayne Industries is polluting like a motherfucker everywhere. Gotham needs to rebuild. Not at the expense of the soil. Here we go again. Every time your Batman has a sandwich, he's got to watch out. Yeah, just his lettuce come to life and punch him in the eyes. <laughs> Tomatoes just slice through him like bleeds. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is, oh yeah, Swamp Thing's, um, like, you know, his physical form can just be whatever plant matter is nearby. Which is, like, normally it's just trees. You know, that's a cool visual. Or moss. Or swamp. It's called Swamp Thing. It's so, like, you know swampy, mossy water things. You know, like, you've seen like, Avatar The Last Airbender? Mm. We have like the waterbenders who live in the swamp. He kind of looks like yeah. that a lot of the time. But sometimes you can like, be a tree man, or you can be a leaf man, or you can be a cigarette man. So what's the deal with the... Obviously, cigarettes have dried leaves inside. Yes, tobacco. Right. Which, 
Um, Swamp Thing can use to create himself a body, as the character Constantine learned when he was trying to dodge um, uh, Swamp Thing in one comic book. Because like they had like a crossover and like Constantine like, no, I don't want to talk Swamp Thing, he's so lame. I just want to leave. I don't want to talk Swamp Thing. I only know John Constantine because he enrages me. And he's in his office, he's rolling a cigarette, and Swamp Thing's like, no, fuck you, talk to me. And just takes over the tobacco in his cigarette and uses that to create a form, so he just becomes like Weed Swamp Thing. <laughs> he looks so fucking, so lame. He just, he just becomes like 420 Swamp Thing. So he can turn into any biological matter that used to be a plant. Yes. Because obviously the tobacco leaves are dead and dried. Yep. So he could become the, like, I was always the floorboards. He could become that. Yeah. Anything in here that's made from a plant, like fibres and clothes might be made from plants. Yeah. No! That sounds scary, doesn't it? But no, that's the thing though, like, because Constantine doesn't expect it, where he's just, he's smoking his cigarette, or he's about to, and just his cigarette comes to life. And that's the thing, like, he's only like a little bit of tobacco in that cigarette. <laughs> but then it just forms the giant, like, eight foot tall swamp thing, and he just starts giving him the business of like, you fucking listen to me, you stop polluting the earth, you bastard! Like, do people who smoke weed, like, they're burning plants. There's the thing as well, like, imagine how fucking much you would trip balls. <laughs> If you, like, spark up a joint and Swamp Thing emerges from, like, the joint and starts giving you, like, you know, some guff for destroying plants. Like, what did you, like, are you stoned? A little bit, yeah. What have you ordered? A pizza? What's in that pizza? It's vegetarian. <laughs> Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing advocate for meat eating only. Well, that's, that, I can only think that's the only reason why he's not in more comics because he's just one of those things of oh, it comes across as a bit preachy to have a character who's like, stop polluting you bastards. And it's really hard to sell that when you've got Poison Ivy right there. And I feel like Poison Ivy is just an easier on the eyes package for that message of just hot lady. I wouldn't get too comfortable if I were you. Shit. <laughs> But couldn't Swamp Thing look like Hot Lady? He could if he wanted to. He just wants to look like a fucking tree man. He just wants to look like an end. But does he have like a, a specific form that he does take regularly then? Just, yeah, just the mass of like leaves and swamp shit. That's the thing as well, like, Swamp Thing must stink. <laughs> he must smell like poo all the time. Or tobacco. Or tobacco, yeah. That's in, the Constantine like... situation. Oh man, what would be the nicest thing for him to like, you know, it would constitute his body out of? Like, what flowers? No, cause I'm thinking like sandalwood. Do you know like, the wood they used to make um, uh, saunas? Yeah. Do you know like, that it's a really nice, like, musty smell? Musty's probably not the right word. Well, you know, I know what you mean. Like, but yeah. that, the smell of a sauna. Imagine if you just walked around and smelled like a sauna. Or like smoking chips that you would use in like a barbecue. Oh, yeah. Because that's the thing is like, cause my mum and dad used to smoke. And like, tobacco doesn't smell that bad. It only smells bad when it's like lit. The like, actual tobacco in itself is all right smell. So they put it in a lot of like men's aftershave and stuff, so I can't imagine that smell too bad unless you catch it on fire. Yeah. Which would be awful. But also, like, surely he has to. It's the, the amount of mass of the tobacco. Because you just say he grew into a big. Yeah. But, I'll, I'll find the picture, it's really funny. But how can he do that when there's only a certain amount of mass in a tobacco? How about you shut up? How about that? <laughs> that can't be the answer to everything. They can't make him a character. No, he's just Weed Man. That is. Fucking horrifying. Yeah, he's just Weed Man. He looks like one of Hellraiser's children. Yeah, he's just Holy Weed Man. Holy shit. When he starts giving him, like, guff for it, and, like, are you really, like, you know, being casual at a time like this? There's an entire species at stake. And he's like, shut up. Go away, Swamp Thing. There must be a, a limit to what he cares about, though. Because otherwise he'd be trying to kill everybody because everybody uses plants. All the time, yeah. So is it, like... What, like... He obviously can't give a shit if you cut down a single tree. Well, it depends if you do it in front of him. And that's the thing as well, and that's why this is so hilarious. It's like um, Aquaman is another character where this happens a lot, where there's a couple of comics or TV show arcs where Aquaman, like, technically is, like, the king of all the seas, which means that every ship on Earth is all the time just, you know, infringing on his rights and his borders. And there's, I think it's an episode of, like, the, the animated show where he comes to the UN and is like, stop dumping shit on my land. Like, it's, sov it's a sovereign nation. That's the plot of the Aquaman film. Yeah, it's like, yeah. stop dumping shit in the ocean. That's my kingdom. 
And then, like, everyone on Earth's like, no. <laughs> and that's, like, the thing is, though, he's got a legit point of, like, it's my kingdom, respect my fucking borders, where are your borders? Everywhere the water is. First you sink a nuclear submarine, and then you threaten us to make peace. Who gave you the right? I am the born ruler of Atlantis. A country we do not even recognize. These are my final terms. Refuse them at your own risk. But your demands are outrageous. They would compromise our entire world defense and economy. Your problem, not mine. To be honest, that's a bit too big of a kingdom. I don't know. But it's that thing as well, and then, then you know, then they have like stuff in some of the comics where like you know some nations like make a deal with like Aquaman to get like you know the rights to travel across. Because he controls like the Kraken and shit. So he's basically like Davy Jones in that one part of the Caribbean movie where he can, like you can just sink any ship that encroaches on his land with that like huge big fucking octopus monster he got. DC does always seem extreme. Yeah. I think that what you were saying at the start about like, obviously there are examples in Marvel, but when you hear about DC characters, they're always the extreme of something. Like Superman is the most powerful, the mm -hmm. Flash is the fastest, Aquaman has the entire ocean. Yeah, and it's even when they've got characters who are ostensibly grounded, like Batman is just a vigilante, he just punches people at night dressed like a, like a ninja furry. He's like, oh, he's fighting God. Yeah, like it always but, goes but also, oh, he can he can do anything with planning. He's one yeah. of the smartest people in the universe. And that does happen to a degree with some Marvel stuff of like you know you have Luke Cage fighting like Galactus in some comics and stuff, but it's yeah. not what he does every single day. And he still like goes back to his roots of like you know just like shaking down fucking like tax dodges and stuff. But yeah, it's a it's a fun thing to think about though, isn't it? Just like how ridiculous that is, and like you know, it's really hard to think of like Swamp Thing as a villain. Even though he's never really framed as well, what a lot of people do think he is, like, you know, in the comic universe at least, because you've got a point. It's like, stop fucking polluting the earth. Same thing like Poison Ivy. I, I don't agree with her methods, but she does have a point of like, stop fucking polluting everything, you assholes. I've got a fun little thought experiment for the people watching. Okay. So in the comments now, I want people to describe how would Swamp Thing get you with the stuff that is currently in your room? Right, well I'm still on a wooden floor. Yeah, so we're, we're on wood at the moment, so yeah. immediately we're going to get like surrounded by wooden cages. Yeah, and I'm wearing like a cotton um, shirt. I think it's like cotton poly blend, and cotton's like, you know, a plant. And like, if you'd like to wear a shirt like this, it's currently available <laughs> pre-order. I mean, the link's below. Nice. So this would kill me. Yeah. There's, um, I mean, I'm stood next to all the herbs and spices. Yeah, I've got like, you know, um, some herbs and spices. There's like, you know, my porridge oats down there. There's a tin of peas. These cloves are going straight in my eyes. Yeah. Oh man, like the clove shrapnel. I've got whiskey and stuff down there. Like, you know, it's made with, uh, or bourbon, it's made with corn. I mean, this is made with hops, right? Yeah. The drink what we're drinking we'll be able to right do that, now. Right, it's liquid, but there's like, you know, some vegetable matter in there, I assume. Nowhere is safe. Nowhere is now. Even in space. Because you think, oh, I'm safe in space, and then you just see like the carrot planet coming at you. Like, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? Is the carrot planet like, is, is it carrot shaped? Or is it a sphere made of carrot? I don't know, I think it'd be a big carrot. And it'd, <laughs> it'd hit Earth like a baseball bat, just directly into um, uh, the, the sun. Isn't it better if it hits Earth point first and just straight in? That'd be funny. Like that sword in World of Warcraft is just embedded in the planet. Well, I know, that's the reason why I love comic books so much. Like, oh, this character's a swamp thing, what does he do? Like, he's a fucking swamp man. He just like wanders around like, yeah, yeah, I'm a swamp man, I control trees. It's like, when you actually break down what that means, <laughs> That's kind of terrifying. The example we always use is Iceman. I was about to say, yeah. From um, uh, X-Men, where it's like, oh, he controls ice, I make ice. And it's just that one comic where a writer actually has a, a background in science realise, no, he doesn't. You can't create ice. Ice is only made when you remove heat, uh, i.e. energy, from something. That's terrifying. And I think it's like the comics where Emma Frost takes over his body and it's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot, Iceman. It's like, what do you mean? It's like, you don't make ice, you remove energy from things. That's terrifying. That's the most powerful broken shit ever. And that's where she just like realizes like Iceman, when he's in his ice form, cannot be killed because his consciousness just exists in like a single molecule of at, at that point. And you can just turn him into like, he doesn't necessarily need to control ice. He can be liquid, he can be vapor. But then, you know, we can just reconstitute whatever moisture exists in the atmosphere um, around the area that is like, you know, consciousness exists to create a body. While we're on the subject, have you seen Charmed? I have not seen Charmed, no. So, uh, I've recently done a rewatch of Charmed. Mm -hmm. if, anyone, if anyone wants to watch it, there is a video on the side channel where yes. I rant about how mistreated one of the characters was. Yeah. But, the, uh, the middle sister, or the eldest after... One well, of the sisters, yeah. Piper, 
Her power initially is to freeze things. Mm -hmm. And then in a later episode, she gets the power to blow things up. Mm -hmm. And when Leo, who is their guardian angel, comes down and he says to her, look, I've, I've talked to my superiors and they're saying that this is an advancement of your power. He describes it as saying that her power is to change the vibration and energy of molecules. And that it's the same thing. Yeah, that's broken. But she never does anything beyond blowing things up or freezing things. Yeah, and it's one of the reasons why I love like the Wiki Weekend series, which is coming back at some point. I'm going to launch it as its own channel. Where you'd get like the nitty gritty of like characters, and you'd be like, like say for example, um, like Magneto. Hmm. Oh, he controls magnetism. It's like yeah, well, magnetism, like you know, it's a fundamental force of the universe. And they tell and they talk about how like you know, build inventions on the other side of the planet, like just with his mind, because obviously you can just control everything. Like Spider-Man's the same, isn't it? Like he doesn't uh, have the hairs on his fingers. Does that, that go into walls or something? No, that's it's the... something to do with the control of the molecules, molecules and like, yeah. the atoms between his like fingers and the yeah. thing. And they say like, you can't remove Spider-Man from any object um, which he's attached himself to, like a gecko would. Or, or we've had Superman and his bioelectric fields that yeah. tries to explain why people he like catches at Mach 3 or whatever don't just explode. Yeah, and then you have characters like, you no, know, even just like, you no know, street level heroes. And, like We mentioned Luke Cage. Mm. It's like with his bulletproof skin. So that's kind of neat. But then the extra detail I like, which makes the universe feel more alive, more lived in, it's like, oh, they have to make like special scalpels when he needs surgery because his skin's indestructible, his bones are. Yeah, the Luke Cage series had the surgery scene where they had to, they, they figured out the way that his skin worked was similar to a certain fish. Mm -hmm. And they used that as a way, I, I can't remember it exactly, but they had to find chemicals. Yeah. Like they had to bathe him in chemicals to loosen that, that skin yeah. to then do surgery before it would toughen back up because there was no other way to surgically like work on it. Yeah, and I love stuff like that, and it's one of the reasons why like, this Swamp Thing thing is dumb as it is. <laughs> I love the idea that writers have just taken that concept where you control plants and ran with it. Like, well, if you control plants, a lot of things can be considered to be plant matter. And I love that shit. I, I, you know, I, 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 you know I simultaneously, I like it and I hate it, because I hate it when it's poorly explained, but I love it when it's like, you know, used in a cool way. I really hate like the cop out that writers will do where they'll say, oh, we can do this because I haven't explained this. Yeah. Well, I don't like that. The speed force. Mm. It's like, how do we explain the speed force? It's, that's basically that Simpsons joke of a wizard did it. Yeah. So how did Wallet speed force? But how, how, how did Barry Allen not lose his power? Speed oh, force. he generates the speed force. But you said it was a fundamental thing of the- Speed force. Yeah, but, Shut but up. he never had it originally, the speed Shut force. speed force. He, yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> How did Batman escape? He planned real good. Mm. Like, he planned a lot. How did Batman beat Superman? Lots of planning. Yeah, he planned But really isn't Superman hard. supposed to also be genius level intelligence? Can't he also do planning? Doesn't or he also, he underestimate Yeah, him? doesn't he also have like reaction? If he can move at like the speed of light, shouldn't he have like light speed reaction speeds, which is more than Batman can have? No, and this is a true thing in one comic where they try and explain it, where he fights the Flash. And they say like the Flash can move at the speed of light, so his reaction speeds within like, you know, it's like an, an at a second or whatever it is. They say Batman spends like eight billion dollars building a mega supercomputer that can calculate as fast as the Flash can, and uses it to calculate where the Flash's next step's going to be and puts oil on that spot. <laughs> and the Flash slips and breaks his neck, and it's like, what even is comic books? Well, isn't there a comic story where they explain that Spider-Man, it's not like that he's able to see super fast to predict things. Can he actually see the future? No, he's, he has precognition. I think we Which is seeing the future. We mentioned that in a bit, so like, well, technically he doesn't see the future. It's like, no, but that's a layman's way of describing it, because it's basically seeing the future. This grass spider hunts using a set of reflexes with nerve conduction velocity so fast that some researchers believe it almost borders on precognition and Those early awareness jerks. of danger. A spider sense. Because like, it's not that he's got powers from a radioactive spider, isn't he? The avatar of some spider god. Oh, he's the spider totem. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. So, why all his villains are like dangerous creatures like rhinos yeah. and octopuses. But then that, that makes it magical, not scientific, which yeah. means he can see the future. Which I hate. I don't like that they made him the spider totem. And they have like Madden Web coming in. They're like, hello, Peter. I'm a shit. It's like, fuck off, Madden Web. No one likes you. <laughs> Stop bringing Madden Web in. Why can't he just be, a, like, you know, a teenager who fired Web out his hands? Just while we're talking about Webb, I still love that the guy who directed Amazing Spider-Man was called Mark Webb. Mark Webb, yeah. <laughs> it's like um, Ang, know, Ang Lee. Yeah, do you think you won't like me when I'm Ang Lee? <laughs> do you ever think we're getting that fucking Craven the Hunter movie with oh, Aaron Taylor Johnson? Yeah. Do you think that shit's ever coming out? <laughs> Are we going to get a Craven the Hunter movie? Stop making Spider-Man's villains without Spider-Man. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get that? Probably. And it'll probably be shit. What's he going to hunt? 
But other stuff. He hunted things before Spider Man. Yeah. What's he going to hunt? So you know in that one comic shot he tries to hunt Venom and he goes really bad. <laughs> so he's just like, I'm going to hunt the ultimate prey, Venom. It's like, that's a bad idea, mate. Don't hunt Venom. He could hunt like a big crocodile. Oh, the thing is that they've already done that and it was handled way better in, of all things, like Batman. But Batman of the Future or Batman Beyond for Americans because they don't like when I say Batman of the Future. Because apparently Americans don't realise things are called different things outside of America. Oh, America I... is not like a monolithic entity in regards to culture. You got shit for this, because in one of the videos you said that in America it was called Batman yeah. of the Future, and it obviously just got the wrong way around. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh my God, Carl, how could you possibly get this wrong? Yeah. So yeah. maybe I'm not from that country, like... But they have a villain in that who wants to hunt the ultimate game, so he tries to hunt Batman. Oh, but he's then... the ultimate game. Yeah, but then because he wants to hunt, like, he hears about this creature that's like, you know, a bat. Like, and in Batman of the Future, you know, he says like, well, I thought he was just a man, but apparently he's been here for 35 years. No man could be that powerful. My life was over until I heard that the legendary Batman had returned. Batman? I'd always imagined this Batman to be an ageless soul, inhabiting the greatest warrior of each generation. If this bat spirit really existed, it would present the ultimate challenge. And he dies, he gets hit by a train. Oh, the ultimate prey. The train. <laughs> That's what Kramer should hold the train. That was like 29 minutes. I'll, I'll edit some out of that one. Yeah. Yeah. 